my friends, or perhaps tonight, my comrades. Hello and welcome to GoldenEye Speed Lore. It's been a while since we've had a comfy episode from here in what we call Bunker 3, the home studio. So tonight we're going to have a really good time talking about a stage where you're at the mercy, once again, of the deity of luck. Yes, the old god you will know as RNG. And for that, we must go to St. Petersburg's Statue Park, the 10th level in Goldeneye, and a level with the same five objectives on all three difficulties. In fact, it's the only agent level with five objectives. And surely if you've played this level back in the day, it was one that may have been extremely confusing to figure out or you got lost on frequently. So let's take a look at the runs over the years that made and shaped the history of GoldenEye 007 speedrunning on Statue. And for that, let's take a look at the objectives first, why don't we? And so here are the objectives on Agent and all three difficulties. Objective A, contact Valentin. Very simple, you run to Valentin and you have a chat with him. B, confront and unmask Yanis. And, um, you know, I'm sure you know this story, Golden Knight's actually Trevelyan. Uh, that's who you unmask Yanis to be, Trevelyan, your old pal, 006. After that, you have to locate a helicopter, rescue Natalia, and find the flight recorder. And finding the flight recorder is the element of luck, the RNG, we will delve into a little bit uh, later on into the episode. Now, on this level, if it's interesting because on most Golden Knight levels, what kind of made Golden Knight fun was that... Because it was sort of um, one of the first games, really, where you weren't forced to go linearly, you know? It's like you could fail an objective, you could kill the wrong person or blow up the wrong computer, fail the mission, but still play the mission. And not many games, well, today certainly, but not many games back then uh, had that either. And this was one of the only levels, really, where once you failed objective A, all four subsequent objectives would fail. And so you're kind of done. And Satchel is very unique in that way because only once you've contacted Valentin can the mission proceed as planned. So the first run we're going to watch is this run. I don't know the date on it, but I believe it to be done around the year 2000 or 2001 by our pal Sean Johnson. A fan of the rings uh, was his username when he came back to the, uh, the Elite in around 2009-2010. But he first kind of joined in, in 2000, 2001, played some GoldenEye, and this is going to be a pretty good example of how to play Statue in its earliest form. And so he's run here about 30 seconds into the mission, now he's talking to Valentin. And even back then, he knew this, is, this sort of dance we do with Valentin is what we call strafing Valentin, the Val strafe. And I remember when I was streaming this level, a lot of people would be like, oh man, like, why are you doing this? It's a speedrun, obviously it's because it's faster. Valentin doesn't want to walk towards you, and if you actually leave his radius, his little circle, um, you'll fail the mission. So by doing this little dance, it can pull Valentin's movement a little bit further out into the level and allow you to proceed closer to the next objective. And you saw objective A complete there. That's the Val Strafe, a pretty decent Val Strafe for the year 2000, 2001. And here we go, carrying on. So now you'll see, once you reach the Lenin statue, Trevelyan, Yanis, will leave from behind this brick, uh, this concrete statue here. And this is when you have the confrontation and unmasking. So there's Trevelyan walking out. And once he's reached that position, he starts talking with you. So the timing of this objective is kind of set as he has to walk out from behind the block, reach that point, then he starts talking to you, and then once he starts talking to you, do the next sort of three pieces of dialogue continue. Good evening, 007. No gun, 007. MI6 must be cutting their budget these days. You'll know if you played the game, if you have a gun out, he'll ask you to put it away. And so if, if you show up unarmed, um, it carries on as quickly as possible. Alec, you're Gannis? And then 
the next dialog will say yes the mi6 hero back from the dead objective b completed and a fan starts running away and now you have to navigate your, your way back to the beginning of the level and uh, you'll get objective c locate the helicopter and you can notice the timer on the bottom of the screen. It's one of few levels where you have a timer. So you can be able to, you'll be able over the course of the night to judge how good the portion of the run from Trevelyan to the helicopter is by seeing the decimal and the time on that bottom timer. So there's a fan, it's like a low 34. And now once you reach the helicopter, the timer automatically flips to 15 seconds left. And basically, you have to wait for the flight recorder to spawn. And it can spawn in one of nine positions. And obviously, it's a speed run. So A-Fan is going to stand in the location which would give the fastest flight recorder ending. Of course, once we're watching it, it happened to land in that one of nine positions. He carries on, runs to the end of the level. And alas, opens the gate. And there we have a Statue Agent 230 by Sean Johnson. And uh, this was never a world record, but it's a pretty good quality run for back in the day and kind of shows how it all worked. Not too long later, we saw a pretty good world record by the creator of the Elite.net website, Derek Clark. Um, you know... Sometimes people will criticize the elite and say, oh, the elite, they think they're better than everybody. Look at the name, the elite. You know, people who are insane on the internet, right? We know lots of them. Uh, this gentleman, Derek Clark, when he was, you know, 15 years old, came up with the name of the website. So if you have an issue with the elite rankings being called the elite, um, this is the man who you're directing that anger towards. Look, he's a nice guy. He doesn't deserve that, okay? This one will be a left ear audio. Uh, it's the way it was. And, and uh, you know, A-Fan's run was pretty good, right? There was nothing really inherently wrong with it. But you're gonna see quite a faster run here. Uh, he got a boost there. This is double O agent now. We're gonna, we're gonna jump back and forth between the difficulties over time. But interesting will be that <laughs> Double O Agent on this level has always been faster than Agent and Secret Agent. So generally when an untied happens, when a new kind of second is dropped off a statue, it happens on Double O Agent first. The reason for that is because the guards are more accurate, they can give you more boosts, and a trick that gets discovered later on is easier to execute on double agent so it's a very unique case in goldeneye uh, where the hardest difficulty is actually the fastest generally speaking so this is actually that was a great val strafe um you actually we'll, we'll check that out again right so if we watch this run we see objective a completed fades out kind of halfway through this wall here so that shows where, where Clark was when that faded out. If we watch A-Fans run again, we'll see Objective A fade out much earlier. So that's, a, that's literally time that's been lost. So, right, oh, it's already faded out. So now we have to run all the way here. That's like a good second, two seconds, uh, that Clark had a much better Val Strafe and a Val Leave. So let's watch, well, let's watch Clark carry on here. And, you know, as the night progresses, we're not going to watch the entirety of a bunch of these speedruns. Uh, because it's this, it's one of those levels where I kind of resented or was kind of wondering how I'm going to do it in speed lore. It's kind of repetitive, same thing, not much variety between runs. Uh, so I think we're going we're gonna to skip to only the most important parts of some runs. And so what you just saw there was... Clark actually, again, another little improvement over A-Fan's run, Clark was building speed on the statue. And then he times the leave in such a way that if you were to get too close to Trevelyan or his friends here, Objective B will fail. And so again, in A-Fan's run, you see him standing in this exact spot. 
right? You see him standing there. If you were to move any closer, the run would fail. Objective B would fail. You get too close for Trevelyan's comfort. So, by building speed and then timing the leave, you're basically leaving at full speed without ever encroaching on Trevelyan's area. And uh, there we go. Objective B completed. And Clark is on his way. And there's a, a second boost. So... Now we uh, have a 2-0 ratio, it saves about half a second, 0.6 seconds each boost. A shot from a shot in the back propelling you forward saves about 0.3 seconds. And now Clark is on his merry way. And of course we're getting, you know, audio glitches and, uh, <laughs> and whatnot. There's a 34.5 um, return, which is even better than, than Afian had. And now again, you'll see Clark wait here, so that way when he's running towards the flight recorder, he'll be at higher speed. Perfect pickup. Perfect pickup. Unbelievable. And uh, now Clark's going to carry around to the ending. The gate says BJ, of course, and he opens the gate, and he has completed a untied world record of 226, four seconds faster than Afan's run. Isn't that remarkable? Well, it was. And 226 was considered very, very good for a long time. This would remain the record for nearly two years, which was a long time back then. But some new strategy got discovered. You see, when you go to approach Trevelyan, it did look perfect, didn't it? You know... Trevelyan will start talking to you once he's reached his position, right? Once he's stopped moving at that position. You can even see it more clearly on Afan's run. Once Trevelyan gets to his spot and stops, the conversation begins. Well, a gentleman by the name of Trent Havis, who I featured in the last episode of Speedlore Control, one day in 2003, he was a little bit mad at Trevelyan. And what he ended up doing is, once he got here, he shot Trevelyan. And he noticed something very strange happen. Now, unfortunately, the thread and videos detailing this discovery have been lost. In the year 2005, Easy Board, the, the board we used for the Elite Forums, was hacked. And a bunch of threads from 2003 to 5 were, ha were, were removed forever, deleted forever. And I think, actually it's interesting because they are, they can, they, they were able to have been found in the archives, in the Wayback Machine, for a while. But now the owner of the domain for EasyBoard, the new owner, has parked that domain, and in such a way that they don't allow archiving you can't archive that site. So it's it's gone forever now until there's a new owner, until they allow, uh, you know, digging up the archives on that site. Very crazy stuff. So unfortunately the thread's deleted. But basically what ended up happening was that if you shot at Trevelyan, okay, and we're going to see that in a second here, He would start talking. What would happen is that shooting Trevelyan would he would take damage and this would interrupt his walk to that point. So he would take the damage, he'd stop moving. Well the game thinks now that he's stopped moving, he's in his position or he stopped moving and now the conversation begins. So by shooting Trevelyan and getting him to stop moving you can start the conversation earlier and it saves a good deal of time. Well, how much time? We're going to watch this. This was actually Wouter Jansen's run. You saw it was, uh, you know, if, if we look at the helicopter return, it's going to be like a 233 here. So a slower return than Clark or Afan's runs. Maybe he got back boosted. And you'll see the end of, you'll see the end timer is, is an improvement over this 226. Uh, by Derek Clark, that's for sure. And now Wouter's even building more speed on this little little statue here. 
picked up the flame thrower perfectly timed, unbelievably timed. Opens the gate. I know this was probably around 2003 when water got this time. 223. So you can see just how much time is saved by the Trev shot. We call it the Trev shot. Uh, but that wasn't all the time that was saved. So this is sort of the iconic speed run of Statue. Uh, again, I may, I may not show the whole thing, but you know, Endgamer presents, presents Brian Bosshart. Uh, Boss would mail his tapes, usually to others, to capture them for him back in the day. There's one boost. I guess this is this is a right ear, a right ear delight. So, it is always funny how back in the day, um, you never knew what ear you were going to get, right? <laughs> and it's like, whenever I come across these videos in speed lore, I'm always like, should I just like, you know, rip them down, double the audio in both channels, re-upload it, and like, it's like, I could, and it might help. I mean, it would help. But it's like, is it, A, is it worth it, and B, does it sort of ruin or affect the, you know, nostalgia factor of watching gaming videos from the year 2003? And maybe it does. Uh, so I'll leave it for now. Okay, watch this Trev shot. Boom, very fast reaction, very fast recovery. Okay, so right here, what you're watching now is Boss and everyone else, we learned the, the optimal way to leave the Lenin statue is when, once this dialogue, Alec, your Yanis appears, you see it come up, you let your human reaction take place, which is about 0.1 seconds, or no faster than 0.1 seconds, you see the Alec or Yanis come up, you think, oh, it's come up, then you press Z. It's important not to jump it. So you want to see the message come up first. Then you press Z, and you slap five times. Once the fifth slap is complete, then you leave. Or is it six slaps? It's a number of slaps. And you'll almost never fail Objective B that way. You'll almost never leave too early that way. So that's uh, a pretty good gauge of... It, it, it just masters the timing, masters the method uh, to leave Trevelyan. And you're always, you know, you can, once you get really greedy, you can jump and fail to save, you know, a couple frames. But generally speaking, uh, that's the timing method that's still used today, actually, to leave that area. So a, a mid-34 there. Boss is going to open. So, okay, so now also what you've seen there is instead of going and waiting by the flare recorder, Boss, since you have 15 seconds, you can do whatever you want with it. Boss will run to the gate open the gate to to uh, to save a fraction of time that it takes to open and go through the gate. So he opens the gate there, then he comes back, runs, and barely makes the position of the flight recorder, picks it up, and now carries on to the ending, and he's in full speed, obviously, since he's been running this entire time. He runs to the very end of the level, and what are we going to see here? 220, statue, double agent, 220. Isn't that an amazing speed run by Brian Bosshart? Way to go. And this 220 on Double o Agent, Boss would actually replicate it on both Secret Agent and Agent, which is pretty hard to do. Uh, but he would get all three, 220s on all three difficulties, which would lead to him having an untied sweep. Statue. There you go. Isn't, isn't that incredible? Statue 220, 220, This screenshot is from August 2005. He got these 220s on Statue in May of 2003. So for more than two years solid, Brian Bosshart had an untied sweep on Statue. Is that not remarkable? And you haven't seen the end of Brian Bosshart's brilliance on this level yet. But alas, as many of you will know, in 2005 a lot of new talent came along to the Elite. 
uh, Dan Cervone, namely, would be the one to slay a couple of these untides on Double O and Secret Agent. Still, two and a half years later, um, that's, a, a, you know, that's a long time. These lasted a very long time. Um, but they would eventually get slayed. Ilu and myself would come along and uh, also do some work on Statue. Now, here's the point in the lore, guys, where... Unbelievable. This was done in August 2006. Wow, isn't that remarkable? And Ilu also got... Oh, you know, if, okay, if you want to watch this run, if you're watching on YouTube, obviously there will be a link to the original in the description on my Zenith Legend channel. You can check it out there. A great... It's really cool. And so Ilu also got a statue secret agent... 220. There's nothing edited in this video except for the very end. So it's once Ilu gets to the helicopter, right? Yeah. Very small edits on these videos. So th they're cheering him on to get the flight recorder. And if you have a keen eye, you'll notice those are the same fans from the damn double agent run that we showed in the Aztec Speedlore episodes. That's literally it. Illu just edited in some applause and some fans cheering him on. Um, so, you know, if you didn't see these entire runs, you didn't miss much, certainly. Uh, but it is important to point out that Ilu did indeed tie these 220s. However, Boss's Agent 220 still remained untied. Now, inspired by Ilu getting these 220s recently, and me climbing the rankings, I tied 220 on Double Agent as well. And then, I would go on to get this run. Now... It's in very bad quality, like I did in 2006. And just watch the intro for a second. I've replaced the audio, but... That was my song selection. Great song selection. And uh, I tell you, the original is amazing. It's a fantastic video to watch. Uh, the song really sets the tone. But, uh, unfortunately, obviously, actually, I think it was Axel Z, uh, would re-upload a bunch of the videos. And so he would replace the audio with YouTube from the audio. And the funny thing is, I ripped this video off of Axel Z's channel and re-uploaded it onto Zenith Legend. And the audio that he put on that was YouTube-friendly, like in 2011, is no longer. It gets copyrighted, so I had to replace the audio again for a second time. Uh, unfortunately, it is not JoJo's Too Little Too Late. But what can you do, right? What a banger that was in 2006. There's the Trev shot. You can kind of get a sense there that the reaction for Trevelyan was a little bit slower than on Illu's runs. Like from when I shot to when it says Good Evening Yanis. Good Evening 007. And you'll we'll see the reason for that in a minute here. But yeah, you know, a clean Trev shot on an agent, which is hard to do. You know, do the, the, the five slap leave, five slaps, leaving, and I think get a boost, maybe one boost. Yeah, one boost. Pretty good. That's pretty solid on uh, on this level. And then running down here, picking up the flight recorder, bingo, bango, and I eventually did indeed tie Brian Bossart's 220 on Agent. And like I said, right, Agent is harder to tie these records on because you get fewer boosts for one. And if we look at the Elite Rankings, actually, uh, this is going to be back from December 06. We see now there's been a bit of a snowball effect on Statue. Jimmy Bauer, Simon Sturness, Eddie Lovins, Leonardo Santos, that's who these initials are on Statue. So there were a number of people who now tied 220. Okay, so 
it's time to talk about a few things about statue and a few things that we would sort of had a basic understanding of at this point but we would obviously learn a lot more about as time went on so here the statue flight recorder and this is pretty interesting so <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, there are nine possible locations for the flight recorder. And now Henrik has broken this down for us in March 2013. Nine possible positions. So we pick up this one at number two, right? That's the one that we go to. Number one is pretty close by. It's, if you watch a full game speedrun, you'll see a, a short clip of one uh, later on. One is one we often like will go for on a full game speedrun because it allows us to see all it allows us to see this other one, number four and number two, if we're saying like over here. But obviously on a world record single level speedrun, you have to have the fastest one. Now the odds of you getting the fastest one are eleven point seven percent. So roughly one in nine. A little bit better than 1 in 9, though. It's actually closer to 2 out of 17, 1 in 8.5. So basically, you know, the way these games are, are coded is there's 256 bits of data. And generally, the RNG stuff is split up into these sort of fractions of these 256 bits. And 256 doesn't divide equally by 9, unfortunately. It almost does, and so they had to kind of fuddle with the 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 uh, odds a bit. So generally, most of these have a thirty out of two hundred fifty six chance of happening. Flight recorder is number two to eight. Flight recorder nine has only half the chances of it happening. That's good for us because flight recorder nine is the worst one. The gate is over this way. Nine is the by far the worst one by far. So it's lucky that it only has half the odds. It's the rarest flight recorder. Although for a world record speedrun, it doesn't really matter. Um, a single level one, that is. Because you either get the best one or you don't. And now they had to give one, they had one remaining bit. So they gave it to the number one flight recorder, which is this one, number one. Okay. So, how much slower, they look pretty close, right? Pretty close to the end gate, the gates, you know, this way. How much slower is number one than number two? And I, I dug into this a bit, and here we go. So I did this comparison. This is my, the main video is my full game run, my PB, where I get number one flight recorder, which is actually the second fastest, compared to one of lose runs, where he gets the best flight recorder. And I've synced them so that we pick up the flight recorder at the exact same time. There it is, okay? And now you'll see how much slower the one flight recorder is from the other one. So I'm gonna pause it right here. We're gonna slowly zoom in, right? So it lose screen, there, it started to darken at 49.74, okay? And my screen started to darken there at 50.00. So it means that the second best flight recorder position is roughly 0.25 seconds slower than the first one. Not a huge difference, but on a single level speed run that's super optimized over the years, it's a big enough difference that you always have to go for the best flight recorder possible. And it's like, if you miss the first, if you go to the location of the best possible flight recorder and it's not there, and then you go to the next location, well, now you've wasted even more time because it takes a few seconds to travel between locations. So it's probably two or three seconds lost, which is fine for a beginner learning GoldenEye, learning how to play the game. But once you have a good PB on this level, it's not you're never going to be able to get a, a beat your PB with the non-optimal flight recorder. So when going for a record, you need that... 11.7% best flight recorder to get a PB or a world record. Now there's more math, okay? So what are the what are the odds of getting these uh, these flight recorders? Well, luckily for you, I've made some graphs. 
So the best flight recorder odds, 11.7%, which means 88.3% of the time, you will not see the best flight recorder. Now I just showed you a, a screen where a bunch of people had 220 and the elite as a whole was going for 219 and we couldn't get it. And it got insane because a lot of people were capable of getting 219 speed runs, very capable. Eddie Lovins, an old school gamer, was going hard for 219. He claimed to have got about 30 219s failed missing the flight recorder, the wrong position. Jimmy Bauer claimed the same, about a 30 flight recorders, a uh, 30 failed 219s. I had one, Mouser claimed a few. It got to a point where the elite as a community was zero for 72 on 219 failed pace runs. We had gotten 72 219s missing the flight recorder at the end. And so that was sort of the, the legend back then. I figured, uh, let's calculate the odds of missing 72 times in a row. And well, they don't really add up. The odds of you missing 72 flight recorders in a row as a community or as an, as an individual are only 0.01%. So the odds are either people were exaggerating how many times they had 219 pace runs that failed, or we were possibly overrunning the flight recorder. We were in the wrong position. Uh, you know, so we were making mistakes and not being in the, you know. Chances are there weren't 72 straight runs with no flight recorder position. That's pretty much that. And so... You gotta wonder, right? If you're going for a record or a PB, you have to sort of be consistent and get these failed runs until you get the flight recorder. So I did some math. Five and six failed runs is about the break point. So the odds of you getting five straight flight recorder misses are 53%, which means there's a 47% chance of you having picked up a flight recorder at that point. So if I was going for a PB, and it would be reasonable for me to expect four or five failed PB pace runs before completing one. Six flight recorder misses, 47% chance of happening. That means you're more likely than not to have completed one by your sixth fail, you see? And I just did some other math just to see what it could be like. After 10 fails, the odds of not having a flight recorder are only 28%. So chances are 81% that you'll have completed it by your 10th fail and 90% by your 19th fail. And like I said, people claim 30, 40. I've seen Erie Butler in here claim 65 failed runs before getting a PB. That's a lot. And it's kind of hard to, the math doesn't quite add up on these. It's possible. It doesn't quite add up. 37 misses is where it goes down to 1%. So you're 99% likely to have completed your PB pace run after 37 PB pace runs. And then for two and three, just for completion's sake, you know, if you fail your PB twice, 22% chance of getting it, three times, 31% chance. So, you know, it's not too bad. And like Clemens says, he doesn't have too bad luck. Odds are by your sixth time, You'll, you'll get it, and, and almost certainly by your 19th time, right? 19 fails, 90% chance you're going to have completed it by then. Okay, well, there is more to talk about. You know, I'm going to actually show a run first. So, despite all of these fails, who came along and finally completed a 219 for good? And it might be, it might be shocking. So, despite 72 alleged fails of, of Statue 219s around December 2006, this is actually our pal Dan Cervone, who showed up around Christmas time and dropped not just one, but two Statue 219s. He completed it on both Secret Agent and Double Agent, and uh, he didn't seem to have trouble with 
all of these uh, flight recorder pickups. He got good luck. After only a few fails of each speed, uh, he completed the runs. And there's probably not much remarkable to see in here. Um, probably very, very similar to these other runs. We'll see where his objective A is here, where it fades out. Halfway through that wall, pretty good uh, pace there. Let's see his trev shot. You know, a fairly quick trev shot, not bad. So, okay. What I mean by failing your PB pace is that, on this one you're watching right now, Dan Cervoni will get a 219 pace run. It was only a completed 219 pace run because the flight recorder landed in the fastest possible position, which you're always going for and then leaving. And it was there. If it wasn't there, it would have been a failed 219. It would have failed objective E. Okay? But it was there, so we completed it. Now, most of the time, it won't be there. Most of the time, it'll fail E. And so, as a result, going for 219, you'll have a bunch of these failed 219s with no flight recorder. But he picked it up there. It was there. And he completes the mission. Yeah, Illu points that was a 35 return. So, this was a, a, pretty, a pretty good second half of this run, which resulted in Dan Cervoni getting two. 19. Pretty good time. And it's kind of funny because, you know, there's all, we've been talking all this math, all this, I know some of you are, you know, it's not, it's not everyone's strong suit to keep up with it, right? But the funny thing is, you know, if you, the first search, if you just search Dan Cervoni, uh, you'll find that he's some sort of like advanced analytical guy uh, for for a, a major league uh, sports team, a professional team, so he's a genius. He went to you know Harvard and these great schools. Brilliant mathematician, and it's kind of funny that this math problem of missing the flight recorder all these times in a row was solved in a way uh, by Dan Cervoni himself, right? So pretty interesting stuff. He got the two nineteens um, again, both of them double agent and secret agent. December 2006. And these, I think, were, were his last untied world records, uh, or certainly some of them. But after he got the 219s, it kind of began to open up the floodgates. Six untieds. Yeah, these were his last untied world records, the statue 219. So, kind of the end of a great era, great player is the kind of last legacy. But. The floodgates opened, and so a pile of 219 started to fall in early 2007. And for, the, for time's sake, I've lumped in three of them. And this kind of will illustrate just how similar these runs are, right? So you can see the top left, Jimmy Bauer, top right, Eddie Lovins, bottom, Brian Bossart. And I mean, look, they're really all in the exact same position at the same time. Now, Bauer and Lovins are on double agent right now. Bossart is on agent. And so this will be the agent untied 219. And after this run, we'll explain why Agent is really so much harder than the other two difficulties. Uh, Boss Hearts run was May 2007. So it took about five more months for Agent, the Untitled Agent, to happen. And yet you'll see Boss is ahead. Whoever's objective A will fade or first is in the lead here. There's bosses. That was like three frames later, Jimmy's. And then four frames later, Eddie's. So we're less than half a second on all three. We're really, really, really close. Well, so that's kind of the point is that, and you can see bosses, okay. 
and, and you will learn why this is in a second. But it, it seems like boss shoots way earlier, right? And yet, the message doesn't seem to... Okay, boss is shot. You know, that's what? One, two frames, three frames, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen... I'm pressing period a bunch of times here. There's a shot from Jimmy. And there's a shot from Eddie. Okay. Now, I bet the message... That was like 20 frames. I bet the messages will appear in much quicker succession. Okay. So, there's boss's message. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, you see how much faster the messages appeared for Eddie and Jimmy. And we'll explain that in a moment. And now they're all going to slap at the same time. And because Agent is slower, it means that you personally, as the runner, have to be faster to compensate for the slowerness of Agent. And it'll make sense when you see the next bit. And now they're all gonna take the same route back to the uh, to the helicopter here. So boss again, still barely ahead by you know a few frames. The gate says BJ. I'm like. Eddie and Jimmy are so... It's like a frame apart, right? It's unbelievable. They all get the flight recorder, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't be showing it. Again, that has only one in nine chance of happening, roughly. And there are a pile of two 19s. Okay. Why is the Trev shot harder on agent well you see in order to learn why we have to study damage animations these are the when you shoot a guard he gets hit he does some damage animation and then he recovers for Trevelyan to start his speech he has to recover from that animation now if we look at the fastest animations number six and number eight are the fastest well these are both body shots in the chest number six is in the groin which is which is decent okay six is groin groin slash body you'll see henrik point out here eight is body five a pretty fast one body okay five is 1.01 seconds body four is reasonably fast four is groin upper arm and lower arm nine ten look two like, look at that. You see upper arm, lower arm? 9 and 10, and 11 and 12. Look at 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 2 seconds. These are really slow. Imagine having... Like, compared to the fastest reaction possible, you're losing 2 seconds. 2 or 3 seconds. That is not acceptable for a world record pace speedrun. And you will not see runs with these slow reactions tonight because they didn't make history, right? On Agent... If you shoot Trevelyan in the body, he dies, and so the mission fails. On Secret and Double O Agent, you can shoot Trevelyan in the chest, and he will survive a chest shot, which are the fastest reactions. Now, on Agent, you can pull off the groin shots, 4 and 5, which are, you know, 0.15 slower. Trev will survive these ones. You know, stuff like number number three in the thigh is not bad. He kind of gets hit in the thigh, goes down, ooh, and jumps back up. That's half a second slower than the fastest optimal one. But you, know, you look at these, some of these, uh, you know, leg or, or arm reactions, getting hit in the limb, Trevor will survive, and they're four or five seconds, three seconds. That loses way too much time, no world record. And so you have to have a very, very lucky Trevelyan shot. 
in order to complete it on Agent and have it be fast. And that's why Agent is so much harder than Secret and Double Agent, you see? And so, like, because the reaction's slower, because you get fewer boosts, Agent is really, really, really hard. And you'll see the Agent record always happens much after uh, the, the other difficulties. So it's a very rare level in Goldeneye that way. Now, there's a little bit more. If you ever watch a statue stream, you'll notice that sometimes someone will hit a clean Crevelian shot, but it'll still fail. And for a long time, this was a mystery for us until the year 2014. <laughs> when Henrik posted this very informative thread, basically, what these two images are depicting here is the distance between the shot hitting contact and passing a certain point where the guard will react to it. So, in the first picture, the red mark is the distance of the shot, you see? The distance of the shot. The green mark is the guard's center of gravity, center position. So, if the bullet hits the body of the guard before it passes their center of position, they won't have reacted to the bullet. Obviously, Trevelyan, if you shoot past him and he, re and he goes, oh my god, there was a shot, he will react poorly, it'll fail the mission. But if the shot hits his body before the point the bullet passed the center of his position, he'll get hit, he won't interpret that he was fired at, he'll stop moving, and then he will start talking. I know, it's pretty insane stuff, and this was a huge mystery for us for a very, very, very long time. And... You know, like Clemens brings up, the positioning of the guards is affected by where you touch the statue. There are so many minuscule factors on statue that lead up to what happens to the Trev shot. That it's really not anything you can sort of manipulate. It, it's one of those things where it's obviously all skill, technically you know where to shoot, but it's so precise and so kind of random. There are so many moving elements that it can never be done consistently. So it's one of those, I, I kind of group different kind of luck sections. One is pure RNG that you can't affect or adulterate. And one is stuff that it's technically in your control, but it's so complicated that it's just basically luck. And so there's not much you can do to affect whether the shot will succeed or fail. Because you don't know... The difference of, of shooting it beyond Trev's center position is so minuscule in comparison to where he's standing and you're standing and where you've touched the statue and when you shot. So it's basically luck. Okay. With all that in mind... With all... Ugh, where do I even continue? With all that in mind, we've now reached this point, March 2008. You see a pile of 219s on statue. Cervone, Bauer, Lovins, Boss. We just watched Boss's 219 on Agent. Uh, which took place the year before, actually. In 2007. But March 2008, we have these times on the rankings. And another thing you will notice on the rankings, is that there are, you know, we saw a few a while ago, like on this one from 2005 Boss has so many untied that's all Boss in 2005 in 2008 it's a lot less Boss, there's a lot more Clemens a lot more Ace and so Boss was really starting to feel the pressure and I remember talking to Boss a lot about this at the time. Saying, you know, Boss kind of saying, like, look, all these times I got are great, whatever. 
but I want like a defining world record. I want a record that's so good, it would take 5,000 hours to get or match. Like an impossible, a, a true masterpiece, a true work of art, a truly brilliant speed run. And, you know, Boss, at, at the time, he kind of thought he was in a drought. He, you know, he was playing late 2007, early 2008. He hadn't got a record for a couple of months. By this point, Ace and Clemens had passed him on the rankings. It was the first time when he was not first. He was, you know, he, he'd been champion for about five years and finally got passed. And that was a big deal. So he was feeling kind of down about himself. And he wanted to make his mark on the rankings forever. And Boss would go on to get this speed run. Great question, Worfy. Asks if you're ever in danger of dying on statue. We will talk about that later on. Pretty much never is the case, but I will talk about the one case where it can happen. On statue, I've always played 1.2, even since 2006, uh, Mort. <sighs> this run is so good. This run was done in the year 2008. And it still holds up. It's like... Unbelievable. There's the message, five slaps. We're now at three boosts. Boss has three boosts. I bet it is, Sammy. Clashing Ashes is Sammy Rogers. He says this is one of his favorite runs of all time, and uh, you may see why, or what it inspired later on. Well, General, maybe it can't go any lower than this remarkable speedrun. <sighs> like a, a 35.2 helicopter touch. And think about how good this run is. He still needs the 1 in 9 flare recorder. After a perfect run with 3 boosts. Gets it. Statue. Double O Agent. 218. A truly remarkable speed run. By Brian Bosshart. Unbelievable. Yeah, one thing I'll point out that Luke says, and we have seen it before tonight, but when picking up the flight recorder, basically, if you are in the exact position where... And watch the timer. The timer's really weird. It goes back up after it reaches zero. Like, 01. Then it goes to, like, 05, 08, 11. If you're in the perfect position, and you pick up the flight recorder, and it lands, like, on you... You'll see Objective E completed come up before Objective D. And if we watch, like, if we go back and watch, like, A-Fan's run. Um, no, A-Fan will be in the right spot. If we watch Wouter's run, yeah, Wouter should, you'll notice it doesn't say that. It'll say D before E, probably. So it's like, E before D is like the, you know, it might save a few frames, but it's like the you're in the perfect, oh, no, Wouter did have an E before D, god damn it. <laughs> Bosses 220 may have a uh, a D before E. Yeah, there. Okay, D before E. There you go. So it's like he was. Bond's hitbox was not in the same spot as the flight recorder the moment it appeared. E before D, that means 
perfect flare recorder. It's kind of just like a kind of extra swag and saves maybe a couple of frames. The point is boss's statue double agent 218 is pretty much perfect. And yeah, like Kevin points out, I mean, we saw that run Jimmy Lovins and Boss compared how identical these runs are. Every frame, every moment counts so much. Unbelievable. And, you know, this is sort of kind of a, a meme kind of a... You know, boss went back through his times page and posted all these kind of funny comments. Time was untied when set. Video was original with increased brightness. And so, you know, the, the phrase time was untied when set is like a godly swag phrase in Goldeneye. Clemens has that phrase as his elite forum username. Time was untied when set. Pure swag. Absolutely pure swag. And you can see the date on this. March 2008. August 2012. Four and a half years later. It's still untied. Isn't that insane? Like, how good was the boss's speedrun? Four and a half years into the modern era of Goldeneye, it was still untied. You can see now, you know, 219 Secret Agent has started to get tied. Ten people have it. Three people have 219 Agent, which is very hard. Ace and Adam Boson. You know, there's, uh, you know, there's Boson's mention for the bingo card. So people were getting good at statue and still no one could quite match. Boss is 218. But as we know, the, uh, the modern era was upon us. The era of streaming. And statue was interestingly one of the first levels I really started streaming on. So here's some... I'm, I'm not going to show the whole runs. I'll show the endings of these. Here are some clips of me playing statue from back in October, November 2012. I think this is my double, yeah, this is double 0219. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see the pace. There's a very unique music change. Okay, so I, I was kind of halfway through that wall when the, you, 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 it's very noticeable. And boss was like, 0.2, 0.3 ahead of that. I knew this had a good chance at 219. Come on. Yep. There's the Trev shot. I fuck. <laughs> I think I. Fuck. That was a sidey boost, not very good. Then a four boost. I think what I did is I underran the app, the flight recorder here because I knew it had a really good chance at 219. Even though you, that sidey boost hurt, but it was a really, really good pace here. And now I'm slapping. You'll see why in a, in a minute. No, that was the Evil 4D. That was really, really, really good. Perfect play recorder pickup. Not much of a pop-off. Back then I had to, you know, be pretty quiet while streaming. Um, and just such an ancient stream. It's really kind of funny to watch that. Now, the reason I slapped, there's no real reason for it. However, we determined by this point in GoldenEye that what affects the RNG in GoldenEye is every single input you've put into your game since it's been powered on is how the game decides the, the, the bytes that out of the 256, right? Okay. So the idea is, if you can do random things at the end of the level, you can change, you, you can throw in more inputs. And so maybe you were going to have an unlucky input and then you slapped a bunch of times and that affected the RNG. That's obviously can be a double-edged sword, 
because maybe if you didn't slap, you would have had the correct RNG to get the right bites for the best flight recorder. <laughs> you know? So it's really just a meme. It's really just superstition to do random stuff at the end of the level and hope it works out and you get the right bites sorted out to hit the best flight recorder. No meaning, no true value, only superstition, which can have value, you know, mentally, and you know, it can be fun and have some value, right? Now this is... I actually wouldn't get Secret Agent at the same time. It would, be, it would be much later when I would get Secret Agent 219. This is a failed 219 pace run. <laughs> Let's see here. So, you can kind of gauge your endings of statue based on many things. One of them is when Objective C comes up. That was above 38, which is solid. That means I've had a fast ending. A high 34 uh, helicopter touch is not bad, but you want a mid 35. So here I'm, I'm trying to affect the RNG. And no, see, there was no beep. The flight recorder landed in one of the other eight positions. No flight recorder. This is now a failed run. And so if you're asking what a failed run looks like earlier, this is it. You can see the, the red texture says failed, objective E failed, two, and you can see the time was 219, my best time is 220. So I, I know the, the jargon and whatnot can be confusing, I hope you can sort of understand now, I did everything correct on that run. I just didn't get the lucky flight recorder position, so it was a 219 fail. And as we discussed earlier, it could be 5 or 6 or 10 or maybe up to 65 failed 219 pace runs before getting a completed one. And, you know, we did the math and, and figured out that, you know, you're 90% likely to have get it by your 19th fail. But you'll see some people have failed many, many more, including the next run we're going to feature. So in November 2012, I remember vividly being in Mark Rutsu's chat room. And he might have been running full game. We were doing a lot of full game 100% runs at the time. People like the statue, though, because it's like a lottery at the end. It's a lot of fun to watch. I forget what Mark was playing specifically, but I remember being in his chat and being like, Oh my god, Mark. This top 10 player just got his first untied world record. I've just seen the post in the world record thread. I've just seen the board top update. This run just happened. And Mark was like, oh my god, no it didn't, oh my god. And we sat down and watched this run. Jimmy Bauer. The mysterious, enigmatic Jimmy Bauer. Statue Secret Agent 218. And at this point, Boss's 218 double agent was still untied. And because the levels are so similar, obviously Jimmy could have got 218 double O. He had the skill to do it. But he chose to play Secret Agent for the opportunity to get the untied world record. Tuzer, I, I don't believe that's correct. Not to my knowledge. Listen for the pace. <laughs> that pace wasn't even that good. Like, Boss and even my joint team were faster at this point, actually. But I don't think... He, did he have any boost yet? Maybe not. Okay, so the stucks on Val aren't that big of a deal. Because... One boost? So you have another boost. Here's gonna be probably a third? Only 2-0, oh, wow. But he took a slightly different route there. So, okay, the thing with, with Valentin strafing is that because all that matters is how far you pull him out, 
a slight stuck on Val won't affect that that much. So it's because you're not like running full speed and getting stuck. You're doing a thing that pulls him out and gets him further into level. And so a stuck is, it, it's not the same as like running at full speed and getting stuck. And you, that ending, see Jimmy is unbelievable at the ending from Trev to the helicopter. Unbelievable. I can never get uh, a 35 lift, uh, a 35 helicopter timer, but he can do it like, like that with one boost. It's insane. He's so good at it. E before D. The perfect flight recorder pickup. And we don't know how many 218s Jimmy failed before getting this. But we do know that Jimmy got it. That's for damn sure. 218 secret agent untied world record. His first. And certainly Jimmy Bauer's uh, legacy. This episode could be as much about Jimmy Bauer as it was about Boss. That's absolutely for sure. And uh, here we go, 218 Jimmy Bauer, November 27, 2012. He doesn't have the cute comment, untied when set, but uh, damn, that is a hell of a run. And so you would have seen on the rankings at the time, actually, it would have said, you know, Boss untied, Jimmy untied, which is pretty crazy. And the, the kind of even crazier thing is you would expect Jimmy to have gone for 218 double O after that but because the level is so like insane so exhausting so much luck he needed a break from statue and didn't play it again for a couple years that we know of but someone else did someone else was like you know what it's time to finally tie bosses to 18 00. I'm gonna go for it. That man's name, Mark Rutsu. And this run is a commentated Mark Rutsu run. I'm just gonna let it play out and see what he says. This was live streamed in March 2013. Let's run a slap, try to affect the FR. Oh, is it enough? I think it's enough. I think it's 218. Holy shit, I got it. Finally! 
Well, uh, that was pretty random. I just slapped and hope for it, and there it was the FR finally. <laughs> After 28 fails, it wasn't the best run, it was definitely 0.9. It was very high. I had a I had two boosts, I think. Couldn't have been one boost. Well, maybe. I'm not sure if I got a boost at the start. I... Actually, I don't think I got a boost at the start. That, was... that might have been only one boost run. And it wasn't even the best... Uh... The best trap recovery was, I think it was the second best. Not the third. Best. But yeah, nice strafing. Very good. Well, strafe. That's my strong part of the level. Feels good to finally have it done with. It took uh, longer than it should. Thanks guys. No, not 34 fails, Laura. 28. Why did you... Bring 34 up, like an un um, aim earlier. I didn't, I didn't understand it. Was that a 35.3 return? That's pretty insane. With only one boost. That's it. Got the fucking FR. It's a miracle. There's the vid. Unbelievable. Uh, a lot of things to get to there. Like you said, 35.3 helicopter timer switch. Insane for one boost. That's really, really, really strong. The flame recorder was D before E, so maybe lost a couple frames there. Uh, but that, 218 all the way. He claimed 28 218 pace fails. Think about that for a second. Like, he could have had the world record on 28 separate runs before this had he got the flight recorder, and he didn't, or so he claims. And so the chances of that happening are 3%. There's a 97% chance you would get the flight recorder within your first 28 fails. And he didn't. Um, pretty wild pretty wild stuff for sure and let's just go back and, and listen to the music tone after objective a complete so that's always important he does point out as well that it doesn't seem like the best trev reaction so that's probably another 0.15 lost there like so again that music tone's like about a third of the way through this wall and yeah it could certainly We've seen better already tonight, but insane ending, and he got the 218. Tied Brian Bossharts, untied after five years. Boss's 218 in the last five years. Okay, now by this point, we know Jimmy Bauer had Secret Agent 218 untied, which is a big deal. Mark, only three days after this, would go on to tie Jimmy Bauer's 218. So Mark was on fire on statue at that time and doing a lot of work and he would he actually tied agent 219 a couple days earlier. Now unfortunately usually, usually Jimbo is the hapless character in our in our uh, speedlar episodes. I was kind of the hapless character in this one because I, I went for 219 on stream. I didn't get it as a world record and I would get it, you know, 
a few days after Mark's two 18s, um, which meant that my two nineteen secret agent was not a world record when I got it, unfortunately. However, I decided to have some fun with this video. I made some post commentary. This is the kind of stuff I would upload and create in 2013, so times certainly have changed. Watch this speedrun and I hope you guys enjoy it. Nice colors. Good speed. Happy Valentine's Day! Great lead. Nice reaction. Amazing boost. Two boosts. The gate says BJ. Try to affect the FR. Amazing FR pickup. Holy fuck. It's amazing! That was my statue, Secret Agent 219. Not a world record, but a pretty funny run, and this immortalized Affect the FR, and uh, The Gate Says BJ, and Happy Valentine's Day was a big meme uh, early on in, in the speedrunning days, so a lot of good and funny times with this video, for sure. And you can see, like, it was a... I got two boosts, and it was, like, a 35.0 change here, which is pretty bad. Like, I'm just so bad, because if you approach the helicopter from a little bit to the left of here, you can get stuck on the helicopter. I don't want to do that, but it's obviously faster. 35.05 is, like, bad for two boosts. Like, you could get 35.5. So, my returns, my Trev to helicopter runs, I'm just... Not very good at all. Lost some time there. But I still knew with three boosts that this was going to be 219 pace. And so it was the first time tonight you've seen anyone underrun the flight recorder. Like, you don't you don't see this in any circumstance, right? Like, how much time did I lose, right? At this frame, I could have been on that spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. Eight, probably lost eight frames, probably lost, you know, what's that, over a fourth of a second, like, <laughs> just absolute trollery, and it was still 219 for me, and I was happy to gain points, certainly, um, if only I'd gotten this before Jimmy Bowers 218, which I did not.
we're going to zip ahead to February 2014 here. So let's take a look at that. And let's see what the world records were like at this point. So February 2014, statue. I think it's not much has changed. Um, Mark Rutsu has both 218s. Jimmy Bauer and Boss are tied with him. And then five people have 219 agent. So the question kind of remains... Is anyone going to be insane enough to go for 218 on Agent? Where you don't get as many boosts. Where the Trev Shot reaction is going to be probably 0.15 slower at best. Well, of course, this is GoldenEye speed lore, is it not? Jimmy Bauer is the man on a mission to go for 218 agent. <laughs> it's like... I don't know if you guys are already kind of tired, maybe, maybe not, of watching similar looking statue runs over and over and over again. But we have to watch this entire run because it's... Getting 218 on agent is incredible. It's like... Yeah, so most people speculate that the BJ, on the other gate it says JB, you can maybe look for it on this run. People think it stands for James Bond. It wouldn't make sense why a gate in Soviet Russia in St. Petersburg would say James Bond on it. it could have been, I should have asked Doke that when I talked to him. Maybe we can, maybe we can tweet at him and figure it out. Um, maybe we can get... Uh, okay, so that was like more than halfway down that wall. That was a really, really fast-paced run. On Agent, again, it has to be, because the Trev Shot's gonna be a bit slower. And that was, that might have been, that might have actually been the fastest possible Trev Shot reaction. It might have been like the one limb groin shot that gives you the .8 reaction. Side boost, forward boost. Like, the strafing on this is just perfect. And you'll see it... Jimmy will do a little bit of a different route here at the ending, I think, than you've seen. He'll go on the... And Mark did it actually, but it's black and white, you couldn't really notice as much. So instead of going on the... Oh no, he did the same one. Uh, some people will go on the other side of that statue. We'll, we'll see a run or two like that later on. The fastest is a straight in the chest. Like, he, he had he had a faster helicopter return than me. I had two boosts, he had a side boost and a boost, and he's faster. Like, this guy knows his statue lines like none other, it's unbelievable. E before D. It looked like on this one he hit him kind of in the hand, it was like the lower hand. The lower hand chest similar rip. Stuck on that, oh, that can happen too. You can get really trolled by Natalia getting in your way. And you can lose runs by getting stuck on her at the end. Almost happened. But it didn't. What does he sign? I think he signs JB at the ending. Or like something like that. Oh, uh, he just no, he just kinda scrolls around. There's no real shape or form to it. Yeah, everyone kinda has their own signature at the end. But there we go. Unbelievable speedrun by Jimmy Bauer. 218 in February of 2014. I mean, that's more than four years ago now. Isn't that insane to think about? Would any madman... Look, the glory of getting an untied is amazing, and with that glory, you can overcome a lot of hell, a lot of trials and tribulations, um, a lot of degeneracy that you may not be able to withstand normally, but... Because the glory of getting an untied is so great, you can get through it. Tying a record like this is a formidable task because you don't have that same glory. So which madman would be out there to tie 218 Agent? We know Mark tied the 218s on Sigrid Double O. Who would tie it on Agent? Well, let's look at a couple other runs first. Or at least... I guess we're only looking at one run first. It's a, it's a clip of a run. This is our pal, uh, Jono, DSX Challenger. I think he's in chat. 
This is him returning on statue, and this happens to him. The title of the video is called How to Be a Darrow. So, this shotgun guard shot Jono for some reason on the return. Now, you've never seen these shotgun guards appear, correct? On, uh, on any of the runs we watched tonight, these shotgun guards have not been here. Now, someone asked earlier, can you die on this mission? There's one way to die. That was a very powerful shot. In order for these shotgun guards to be on the return on statue, what has to happen is a guard at Trevelyan has to pull a grenade and throw it and kill himself or his other comrades there. If that happens, they'll die and respawn. And they respawn on the return to the mission. So, let's say you get one or two boost start on double agent. You're down to six or seven bars of health. Leaving Trevelyan, you get two more hits. With the shotguns, those are two bars each. You'll be down to about three or two bars. A guard pulls a grenade and kills guards. Guards respawn. And then you get this guard shooting at the end. And... This guard now, they're very aggressive. They'll follow you to the flare recorder area as well. So, it's possible to die on statue, generally double agent, if they pull a grenade, kill each other, and respawn later on. And it's happened to me on like a 219 pace run, it actually has. I don't know, I don't think I made the video though. People, you know, often won't make videos of their frustrating fails and deaths, right? But the point is, it can happen, it's just extremely, extremely rare. Uh, even more rare than getting a good play recorder and uh, getting a good Trev shot and all that kind of stuff. So, it would be crazy if someone had a untied world record pace and had the death. And uh, I don't know if that's, um, who knows what the future will behold, right? I don't have any video like that to show you guys. This is the best I have to explain the chances of you dying on statue. We're going to skip ahead now to February 2016. I don't know the full story behind this speedrun. Luke was mentioning earlier that he predicted this run somehow. This run took place on February 14th, Valentine's Day of 2016. And it, uh, it is of Sammy Rogers playing statue agent difficulty attempting to tie Jimmy Bowers to 18. Okay, so there's a different route. You see, Sammy's now gone onto the other side of a few of the statues. And now he's gone to start an old left strafe. What he's doing here that's really hard is he's using 2.2 control cell, two controllers. And I... You know, I got untied with the 2.x control cell stacked uh, on streets and depot. I cannot fathom how to strafe Valentin using the two controllers. That blows my mind. And that's kind of what prevents me from ever going for 218. This was not 2.x yet? Wow, okay. I mean, still all left strafe. And like, okay, did you hear the music change there? It was like at the corner of that wall. All night we were hearing it in the middle or in the first third of that wall. That was in the corner. So it kind of shows you how fast the, the all left strafe and slightly new route saves. You know, maybe only 0.05, maybe 0.1, but after all night of seeing runs, you can start to see it add up and uh, make a big difference. Dude, JD, if you have the reaction video, link me, man. I, I, I've never seen it, actually. I didn't see it uh, preparing for this run. That he's trying to affect the FR, affect the positions. Hard to believe, a high 34, but that beginning was so insane. That beginning was godlike. Oh, that was such a perfect timing of that FR. Unbelievable.
Statue Agent 218, Sammy Rogers, the madman, tied it. Damn. Damn. Exhausted dominoes. I didn't know this vid existed, honestly. I was just trolling to you, it's not bad. The chocolate thing looked really good, actually. I'm kind of burnt out on pizza. I've had pizza, I think, three times in this past week. And that's not even abnormal. <laughs> That's kind of a normal week for me. What the fuck is this start? Oh my god. Let's go. This is it! Not a good return, but that's because of that side boost. It still pays, though. Fucking God! <laughs> Luke was right. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. That start was the most fucking cooked shit I've ever seen. And it... There was a side boost. That wasn't even a, a fucking boost. That was like his... The ratio was basically 0-1 on that run. And this run. Alright, you, you've got to... You, <laughs> the start to this run... The music change was like at the fucking corner when you're leaving Val. When I left the statue, I got a fucking side boost. I didn't even get a forward boost. <laughs> I don't know how many hours. It's a lot. It, I had 14 fails before this. Um, I couldn't even put an estimate. It's It, it was a really long grind, though. Unbelievable. And obviously a huge congratulations to Sammy Rogers for the <laughs> Statue Agent 218. Okay, I'm going to pull in the, uh, the screen capture for the fails. So 14 fails he claims. So the odds are 83% he would have got it by the 82-83% he would have got it by 14. And he didn't. And he kept going. 
and then he finally, finally got it. Unbelievable, tied Jimmy Bauer. And the, the what's really interesting with that run is that had Sammy not gotten this 218, like 218 Asian is so absurd in so many ways that it may have never been tied. Like, that's the thing. It, it may genuinely have never been tied if Sammy didn't do it here. We would have been four and a half years now without it being tied. And just, it's unfathomable to get such a time. And especially there's, so, like I said, there's much less incentive to go for it and tie it, right? Than, than to get it for an untied. So we could have seen like a 10-year untied record if, if Sammy didn't get it. We could have seen it surpass Mark's damn double low 155 as the longest standing untied ever. Now there's a couple more runs to show. Uh, this one is going to be Wotus playing. He'll talk you through it. He gets some really fast runs here. Shit right now. And watch the hand cam during the Val strafe. Very interesting. I've had a around the corner once. So you could see Wotus are talking about the, the music change was all, right at the corner. Really insane. Uh, he's, I think Sammy's agent run was pretty close to that, maybe a little bit better. So Sammy was like right at the corner. And Wotus is going to be uh, was a little before then, and now watch this run right afterwards. Yeah, and I'm getting, it's pretty sick that I'm getting that corner pace, like, on the edge pretty often. But I need to get more around the corner paces. Be pretty nice. But this is candidate around the corner pace. Yeah, definitely candidate pace. Very good place, actually. That's the fastest pace anyone's ever done, guys. I'm gonna... Perfect way to end that video. That was like halfway into the next wall, like that's actually madness. Is, you know, if he hit the Trev shot there, would that have been 217? Listen to where the music is. <laughs> what? And then we'll compare to Sammy's 218 agent, which was insane. So like Wotus is like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ahead, and then Jimmy Bowers 
Double Agent 218. I haven't, I'm not going to show this one in full, because again, it's so similar to what we've seen. But apparently this one has an insane pace. Bauer was the third person to get 218 on double O after Boss and Mark Rutsu. And he did this in 2014, the same time he got Agent 218. So that one again was like right around the corner. Wotus's was still even faster. Now this one, this video says fastest pace ever achieved after Val leave, three boost start, not clickbait. Okay, let's see this pace. Let's let's see these three boost start too because this is Sammy Rogers by the way. It's like, you, you don't want to say it could be 216 pace, but like, it totally could if he had a 2 or 3 boost ending, you know? And I, again, now he's using 2.x, gaining the point through the star, which is another boost compared to like, boss's 218. I, I'm interested to, to hear where this is, like where where the music changes here. Not all levels can you use the music to gauge your speed. Some of the music can vary with lag, but Statue's music is always consistent. <laughs> what what happened, dude? You hit the Trev shot? <laughs> I've never seen this run, I have no idea what happens. Another boost? Dude, how is this not a 217 fail? Oh, the choke! Oh my god. Oh! <laughs> you can stop it here. Yeah, I mean, I would just, I would melt. That's like point eight lost, maybe more. Closes the gate on himself. Maybe overran the FR2? Yeah, okay. <laughs> he he knew he kind of might have overran the FR, which is why he turned around to look for it there. Um, I want to watch this one. It says non-legit 217 fail. And you'll see why it's not legit in a second. Was that one boost so far? We'll see what the music is here for this non-legit fail. So right at the corner is pretty insane. And that, that boost is so good. So it's like, if you're keeping track, you can get three boosts to Val with the KF7, that boost, which is four boosts and four bars, and then two boosts leaving. And you just saw their objective B failed, so Sammy left slightly too early, like a couple frames early.
Yeah, that 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 was this might be a legit fail. It's like because he left a couple frames early, those frames might have made up the difference. Like those frames might have taken the 217 to be a 218. So that's why we call that a non a semi legit fail. But like that was so close, this is probably a legit fail. Uh, yeah, probably one frame. Wait, yeah, so you can get four boosts to the statue and then two boosts leaving it. And with ghost health, that's six. You can have six O, oh, six boosts. And given that people have got 218 with like one boost or zero boosts, that could be enough to technically get 216. But. Yeah, okay, overran that far. That, that, then, it's, then it's fair to call it uh, not legit. But we will see a 217 on the end screen. Yeah, that's probably overran that far. Oh my god, the music's so insane. Let's see what the 217 looks like. And it's like... You think about it. <laughs> no one has ever legitimately filled a 217, as in, completed the first four objectives and been in the right spot for the flight recorder and missed the flight recorder. So even though we've seen all these insane runs, like, let's listen to the music again, right? Fastest pace ever achieved. Pay attention to the music. Okay, so that's... We don't know what that is. But let's watch Bosses 218. Set more than 10 years ago, by the way. This is how much of a god Boss is. It's like, is, is that even a full second? It might not even be a full second. But it's certainly close, right? So, we know 217 to be possible. It hasn't happened yet. And... No one has even legitimately failed one yet. And you could fail 10 or 20 or 30 and not get the luck for the flight recorder. Can you imagine failing 20 217s and not getting the untied with the, with the correct flight recorder? Can you imagine? Because that is the reality that may be facing someone who dares to go there. That may be the reality. The last run I'm going to show tonight is this one. This run was revealed in the Kapap 3, the Unhoard by a bunch of the leaders, uh, last year, uh, October. So you're going to see Sammy here play with the settings. Enemy health 1000. The enemies are pretty much unkillable. Enemy accuracy 100. They always hit you. Enemy reaction speed 100, they, they quickly see you and shoot. Enemy damage 0. We call this mode, it's kind of a, a joke, fun, side league mode. We call it pinball mode because Bond is like a pinball getting hit at all times possible. And it doesn't necessarily make it easy to get boosts because you can get back boosts very easily as well. But this is a run, perhaps the best run to leave this statue speed lore on. And, uh, actually, when they released it in the Kapap video, they set it to the song Pinball Wizard by The Who, uh, which was pretty appropriate. There's two quick boosts. You saw you had to shoot the first guard uh, to prevent him from getting back boosted. And he has music off, so we can't really get a good gauge for the music, uh, unfortunately. But yeah, it's kind of a funny thing. It's like, on a lot of Goldeneye levels... The music is, like, sort of affected by the lag, and so it's not 100% reliable. Uh, damn, Double Agent is notorious for not having reliable music cues. But statues and, like, Egypts, some of the really low lag levels are extremely reliable. Like, A, faded halfway through, pretty, pretty insane start. And then, obviously, uh, these next boosts are going to be pretty remarkable. Perfect, that was the, that had to be the fastest reaction. So 
So a side boost, a forward boost, forward boost, forward boost. And getting two boosts in a row, like has happened twice on this, is actually even faster than getting two boosts like one after another. Because the second boost, if it happens right after the first one, you're getting boosted while you're still at the increased speed of being boosted. So like, let's say you go from like one speed unit to 1.1 speed units. If you got two boosts, like one after another, you go one to 1.1, back to one, back to 1.1, back to one. But two boosts in a row would go like one to 1.1 to 1.2 and then back to one. So getting multiple boosts in a row is like really, 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 uh, it, it, it's way more impactful. E before D, perfect. And yeah, obviously it's a 007 setting mode. It doesn't count on the rankings. It doesn't have a best time to save. But alas, 217 with a 5 boost on pinball mode. And that is where the potential is for statue 00 agent. And Statue Secret Agent, and maybe even Statue Agent one day. It's just a level where there's so many things going on. And it's one of those levels where there's, like, you're so consistent speed-wise. Like, you saw the comparison runs. You saw the, um, the, the music change in the same spot every run. Like, the odds of you getting a good Trev shot and boosts and flight recorder on the fastest run ever are so low, right? And we're just not quite, even with all the innovations, now using the 2.x control style, now using the slightly different route that saves you 0.1 seconds at the start, all this stuff, we're still not at the point where we can be consistent enough to fail 217s all the time. And in GoldenEye, on a level like this, people think, oh, so much luck, so much RNG, like, oh, no skill. But it's actually quite the opposite, because... In order to complete the luck, you need to be so skillful that you're consistent. And one day when someone can consistently get 217 fails, uh, I think that will be the day when 217 becomes a reality. Uh, although we are far away from that day, given how good these guys like Sammy and Wotus now are at this level. And still we have never seen a 217 fail to this date. And... 217 could happen on the first ever 217 run. It could. Or it could take 30 or 40 of them. And that's kind of the beauty, in a way, of GoldenEye 007 speedrunning. If we take a look at the rankings as they stand today, you'll see on Agent, Jimmy and Sam have the 218. On Secret Agent, 8 people have the 218. And on 009 have the 218. Uh, and it's the same characters, but in a vastly different order. Like, you know, Boss's 218 stands from March 08. That is so insane. And then he didn't get Secret Agent 218 until this year. Ten years later. Another demon slayed with the time I should have done ten years ago. Slow FR pickup. He had a few tenths to spare. I just want to I just want to see that slow FR pickup, actually. I'm very curious. If he, like, we the only bad FR pickup we saw this, uh, tonight was my own, right? So I want to see how bad it is. Not even bad at all, right? Not perfect, but not even bad. I, I would have loved to show a, uh, a Craig McGrath 218 because he's a, he's not a very high-ranked player, but he has these 218s. Pretty good times for, uh, someone at his rank. But there's just... You know, we've seen so many statue runs tonight, but I, I gotta at least shout him out, uh, Craig. So way to go getting 218s. Another kind of interesting tidbit is that Clemens is 219, and Glenn Stevens is, but Clemens is interesting too. He never had a video for it, he never proved the 219. So it's sort of a relic of the past ages when you could claim a time without proof. Everyone knows Clemens got 219, he has 219 on, uh, on Secret Agent. So, like, obviously he has it, but, you know, it, it's one of those quirks of statue. And certainly a lot of quirks, a lot of luck. Could be, you know, at, when I do a speed lore episode, oftentimes interest is reignited in the level. 
and we see a lot of people playing it. And who knows, maybe this will inspire someone to get 217. Maybe. Or maybe it could be in our 10 years. And bosses, double wage in 218, will have stood for 20 years by then. Uh, who knows? So, a lot of characters this episode, but I have to uh, theme it after bosses, 218 double agent. A truly remarkable speedrun among remarkable speedruns. So, there's one more thing I want to show you guys tonight before we leave this speed lore episode. A lot of us are hoping to go to GDQ 2019, but we're probably going to not necessarily go to the event. We might hang on to our own thing. We might, you know, get a bunch of hotel rooms or a house or something and, and have a bunch of elite boys hanging out for a week and, you know, go back and forth to the event and whatnot. Uh, but, and I know this isn't everyone's thing at all, it would obviously be helpful to raise some funds for transportation to the event for some of the, you know, lesser well-off eliters. So, I'm going to play this trailer. We're going to do a fundraising marathon at some point and try to, you know, at least get a pool of money together uh, to help get as many eliters as possible together at what we're calling the Meat of All Meats, MOM, which will take place simultaneously parallel with GDQ 2019. And you know, I totally get not everyone likes or thinks it's cool to, you know, donate money to essentially help people travel and have a fun time and we can, and I totally get that's fine. If you're one of those people, you know, I'm one of those people to be honest, then, you know, don't sweat it, it's not for you. But if you want to help out, and uh, get as many leaders as possible to Mome GDQ. Um, watch this, and uh, you know support the best way you can because it's going to be like hopefully we have us all together, have a great time, and like more history is made. You know, I know you guys love learning about the history of this community, this speed game, and hopefully more of it can end up taking place at this event. So. Jono says it's the worst thing he's ever made, so let's let's give it a watch. So there you go. Momathon will take place October 19 to 21. Probably on my channel, to be honest. It'll just be a bunch of leaders doing... You've seen it a million times before. Playing games on stream. Trying to raise some money. And hopefully we can get as many guys out there as possible. And uh, have a good time. And, and, and make some history. And absolutely make some incredible content for you guys. Uh, I plan on going to Mome, and you know I'm not one of these guys who needs funds to attend Mome, right? So, you know, I plan on going, making a ton of insane, uh, in insane videos. Uh, you know, I mean, one a day would be amazing. You know, doing a uh, a vlog, a daily vlog thing would be amazing if it's possible. And it may be if we have a bunch of dudes out there who are willing to help out and and film and edit and get all this stuff made, right? So, anyways, totally optional. Obviously, up to you if it's something you support. Um, there you go. Go for it. Momathon to get everyone to Mome at GDQ 2019. And so with that, my friends, that is the speed lore episode of Statue. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned about some truly remarkable speed runs and were inspired by some of the great heroes on the stage throughout the years. Thank you all for watching, 
It was a true pleasure. A truly remarkable episode. I, I really had a good time doing this one. It was a lot of crazy history, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Stay true, my friends, and I'll see you in the next stream or video.